Well, I'm excited about being with you uh, in this tremendous study in the book of Acts. We're going to spend uh, session after session looking at the book of Acts and seeing what God wants to reveal to us uh, through His Word. The book of Acts is a powerful, powerful book and we're trusting that the Holy Spirit, the author of the book himself, will literally go to the depths of our hearts and will literally reveal to us all that He's trying to teach us and wants to teach us in these days ahead. I'm looking for change in my life. I'm looking for the book of Acts to reach into my life and to shape it and mold it. I want to see the lives of the disciples and how they are filled with the Spirit and exactly what all of that fullness of the Spirit means as it spills through them in ministry. I want to see the early church. I want to see its flow. I want to see the establishment. I want to see the kind of conflicts they had. I want to see how those conflicts relate to my day and to my situation. I want to take what was going on in that hour and I want to drag it into the middle of my life here and I literally want God to speak to me in ways that I can understand and uh, that would be reality for my life. So you see I'm really looking for change. I believe that's really a key if you're going to understand the book of Acts and especially if you're going to let God do in this class sessions in these class sessions what he wants to do. Will you let him change you? Will you let him go to the depth of your heart and the depth of your mind and, and bring reality of his presence to you? Hey, the whole search of the book of Acts is a search for His presence. Oh, to know Him in the fullness of His Spirit. Oh, to be filled with Him until through Him He can literally begin to demonstrate Himself. That's the whole deal. If you come out of, this, say, uh, out of these class sessions knowing a lot of things about the book of Acts, we will have missed the point. If you come out of this class, these class sessions knowing uh, methods for church strategy and growth, then you will have missed the entirety of what he's trying to say to us. The whole deal about the book of Acts is not just history. The whole deal about the book of Acts is not just the patterns of early church growth. The whole deal about the book of Acts is the intimacy of the Holy Spirit and how that intimacy literally wants to go to the depth of your life, display it on the stage of your living, manifest it through the very lips of your being, shine out of the very face of your personality and literally impact the world. See, in 70 years, these early disciples won their entire world to God. That is, Christianity became the world religion. Recognized, they made such an overwhelming impact upon their society that the whole world was embracing Christianity as the world religion. Um, oh, that we could do that again. Oh, that the same identical fullness of the Holy Spirit could come and live in us. Oh, that that kind of experience could take place within us again. It has to be. It just has to be. It's what the book wants. It's the fulfillment of the Great Commission as Jesus gave it to us. Spilling into the book of Acts as they literally carried it out under the power of the dynamic Holy Spirit. Are you filled with the Spirit? Do you know intimacy with God? Are you allowing him to flow through you? That's the questions that are going to be asked in the book of Acts. You know, of course, that the book of Acts and the Gospel of Luke are intimately tied together. And we're going to spend some time in dealing with those kinds of, that kind of inner linkage between those two and try to establish the theme as it is laid out for us. We're going to look at the author. We're going to look at the time it was written. We're going to look at something of the inner flux of the culture of that day as it literally affected everything that was going on in the play out of the Gospel and what that means for us. So you see, we've got an exciting study ahead of us. We're going to start today in this class session by uh, talking about the issue of saturation. Oh, we're always coming back to that, aren't we? Every class, every class we seem to, uh, in all the courses, we seem to zero in on that. And the reason, of course, is because it's such a fundamental. It's, it's so much where we are and where we need to be. It's the lifeline. It's the source by which we begin to be fed the kinds of things that we really need. And it's a principle called saturation. Now, again, we're not interested that you get all wrapped up in terms. We're not concerned that you call this the right term. What we're interested in is that you grasp the concept and begin to have it living out through your life. See, this is not just a principle to understand. This is a lifestyle to begin to flow. In other words, saturation is to be a consistent, constant thing living in and through your life. And we want to spend some time talking about the consistency of saturation as well as saturation itself. 
So you see that the whole issue of saturation literally needs to be a lifestyle. So it's not something we're trying to teach you for a class period so you can get a grade, graduate, and we can all applaud. And then promptly forget what you learned. What we're really interested in is that this would become ingrained into your system. That it would go to the depth of your being. That you would literally grasp it and understand it and literally bring it into your system until it would begin to possess you and become a consistent lifestyle. See, whether you're a pastor, whether you're an evangelist, whether you're a missionary, whether you're a layman, whether you're a carpenter, whether you're an electrician, whoever you are, if you're going to name the name of Jesus Christ, saturation has got to be a part of your life. This is not just for the development of sermons. This is not just for the development of proper uh, techniques of church growth. This is not for programming. What this is for is for lifestyle in Christ. If we are going to live the cross uh, on a daily basis, the style of the cross is going to, be, going to be lived through us. We are going to have to understand saturation. It is a literally, absolutely a key, and it must be a consistent, constant thing. So you see, it interweaves itself into every subject we're going to discuss. If we're going to discuss English, then we have to discuss saturation. Because saturation in Jesus is the only possibility we've got to speak the way we ought to speak. To communicate what we ought to communicate. For it's no good, it is no good at all just to have proper verbs and proper nouns and know how to diagram sentences unless somehow, someway, through you, there begins to spill the communication of God. That only comes out of saturation in His Word where you literally bite into his word and it bites into you and you begin to understand it from the inside out and you begin to think in biblical terms. In other words, the food you're going to eat is biblical food and you're going to have the biblical energy and flow with the biblical thought process and the biblical ideas and you only get that if you saturate. See, if you saturate in psychology, you'll know psychology. you speak psychology. You'll bring forth psychology. See, if you saturate in basketball, football, athletics, oh, you can talk that language. You can spill forth with all of the statistics that are meaningful. You can give all the past records. You know where all the teams are, how they play, what they play, what numbers they are, what their numbers are, what, the, what their batting average is. You, you can get it all down, see, if you saturate in it. Hey, what would happen if you'd saturate in the Word of God? If you'd come back to the book and literally saturate in the book, so this class period is an amazing opportunity of saturating in the book of Acts. Oh, to literally breathe it in and breathe it out until saturation takes place and we know it inside and out and God is able to speak to us and to take the concepts and principles of the book of Acts and begin to weave them through our very system until we begin to live the book of Acts all over again in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. So you can see how essential saturation is if we're really going to understand the book of Acts and get into it. So our assignment for this whole in class period is saturate, 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 get into the Word of God, saturate in the book of Acts, breathe it in, breathe it out, get to know it, let it speak to you, let it begin to handle you, let it begin to mold you, let it begin to do in you what it desires to do through the power of the person of the Holy Spirit. Saturation, absolutely a key. Hey, got to do it, man, no way to survive without it. See, I'm convinced that the greatest deterrent to burnout is saturation. It's when new truth is constantly spilling through your system. It's when the Word of God is coming alive to you and hey, it begins to generate within you life itself because you are seeing a revelation, an unfolding of the person of Jesus Christ. See, that's the great deterrent to burnout. I've never had anybody who said, oh, I'm, I'm really into the Word of God. I'm into the book of Acts. Wow, God is moving upon my life. I'm seeing things I've never seen before. Whoa, my life is being stretched. Man, I'm being enlivened by the very essence of His presence through the Word. Man, I'm excited about the Word of God. Oh, but I tell you, I'm burned out. Think I'm going to quit. Think I'll throw in the towel. Not interested anymore. Yeah, I think I'll backslide. See, those two don't go together. See, nobody's ever in burnout when they're excited about the Word of God. See, I'm telling you, the greatest deterrent to burnout is the excitement of the Word of God. 
I know classes can get heavy. You can get bogged down in training. You can get bogged down in ministry. Hey, it isn't any better in the pastorate or in evangelism or in the mission field. Hey, you can get bogged down in details. Hey, the things that have to be done that you don't like to do in order to do what you want to do. See, all of those things, the, all of those kinds of interruptions in your schedule, all that stuff. How are you going to survive all of that, man? Hey, going to have to be saturation. Word of God is going to have to feed you. So whatever job you're in, whether it's electrical, whether it's plumbing, whether it's grocery store, whatever, whether it's ministry in terms of, uh, uh, of grocery store, plumbing, electric, or uh, pastoral, or evangelist, hey, God has got to flow through you through the saturation. See, it's the only chance you got, man. If you don't get into saturation, you won't survive. You won't get it. You won't be what you ought to be. Hey, and getting up 10 sermons and, and living off of those 10 sermons for the rest of your life is not what this is all about. This is all about the constant flow of the Word of God, generating and quickening and aliving your very being in the essence of the Spirit of God. So you see, the living Word and the written Word begin to come together. In fact, I want you to turn to the Gospel according to Luke. And in the Gospel according to Luke, we begin to see this kind of thing unfolding. Oh, it's all over the Scriptures. But I just have time to uh, deal with one passage. I want you to go to chapter uh, 24. It's the final chapter of the Gospel according to Luke. And there's some great scenes in this chapter, of course. And we're going to be talking a lot about this as, it, as it's tied into the book of Acts. Because in the beginning of the book of Acts, he literally begins to broaden in the first 11 verses and catch their attention with the things that he said at the close of this book, that is the gospel according to Luke. So the book of Acts, beginning book of, of the book of Acts, is literally a rehashing and an extension of this closing of the gospel according to Luke. Now, chapter 24, of course, ends on the great ascension account. And there's just a very few verses. As the disciples returned to Jerusalem and with great excitement spent their time down at the temple praising God and, and blessing Him for all that had taken place in the resurrection appearances of Jesus Christ. And it's a 40-day resurrection appearance, remember. Jesus has now ascended. There are some resurrection appearances that take place in chapter 24. Uh, special experiences with the resurrected Christ that are recorded for us. And one of them is really significant. Of course, it's the occasion of the Emmaus Road. And, uh, and you know that story well. So turn to Luke chapter 24. And you'll remember, of course, that Jesus is now raised from the dead. And according to uh, verse 22, the women of our company who arrived at the uh, tomb early astonished us. They did not find his body. So the boys are carrying on a conversation with each other and uh, are telling uh, this tremendous Christ the story of what had taken place. Uh, the Emmaus Road is really an interesting thing because as you get into it, you find that two men are walking down the street. And uh, all began with us at verse uh, 13. In verse 12, you'll note the beginning setting of the whole thing. Peter arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen cloth, uh, cloths lying by themselves, and he departed, marveling to himself at what had happened. So Peter has now experienced the empty tomb, hasn't seen the resurrected Christ yet. And then in verse 13, it begins like this. Now behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. Seven mile trip. How long would that take to walk? Oh, it takes several hours, wouldn't it? Hey, they're headed down for Emmaus. And they're talking together uh, about the things that have happened. Why not fill the time as they're walking down the Emmaus road? Now, while they were talking in verse 15, so it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Phenomenal, isn't it? The resurrected Christ has come. And can you believe it? Their eyes were restrained so they did not know him. The resurrected Christ dwelt with them. They didn't know it. The resurrected Christ walked with them. They didn't know it. The resurrected Christ was carrying on a conversation and was spilling revelation to them. They didn't know it. <laughs> I wonder how many times the resurrected Christ has shown up to us. We didn't know it. wonder how many times he's brought revelation to our lives. <laughs> 
But we missed it. We were so sidetracked. We were so problem-centered. We were so wrapped up in what was going on in our own lives. We were so engrossed into the things we had experienced and what we were trying to work our way through. We were so wrapped up in our disappointments and our discouragement and what the church had done to us or not done to us. We, we were so involved in all of those. Hey, we didn't even know it. The resurrected Christ showed up. We didn't get it. We didn't see him. We came to church, man. Hey, God was everywhere. His revelation was coming. The word was open. Hey, there should have been the overwhelming gripping of the power of the word of God. He wanted to communicate to us. <laughs> we didn't get it. We saw the chandelier on the, uh, we saw the cobweb on the chandelier. We were all wrapped up in Sally's new hairdo. We, we, we missed it because the kids were uh, bouncing the ball against the wall over on the opposite side of the sanctuary and we weren't paying any attention. The whole dynamic movement of the Spirit of God slipped through our fingers. Hey, slipped through our fingers, man. Slipped through our fingers. Resurrected Christ, Christ had come. We didn't get it. We didn't see him. So there they are. Interesting, isn't it? Verse 17, look, look at what the resurrected Christ has to say. What kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Oh, he spotted what was going on in their lives. Uh, then they begin to open up to him. Then the one whose name was Cephas said, uh, uh, answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem and you have not known the things which happened there in these days? <laughs> Man, you aren't up on the latest current events. You don't watch TV, do you? And so he begins to spill it out. He said, these things concerning, verse 19. And he said to them, what things? And so they said to him, these things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet. Oh my, my, my. Look what's happened to their belief. They used to say he's, this, he's the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now he's the prophet mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping, huh, we had some confidence, we had, were hoping, it was our dream, the reason we followed him for three years, verse 21, that it was he who was going to deliver and redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. And then they go on with the story. Uh, look at what Jesus does in verse 25. And he said to them, Oh, foolish ones, ha, foolish ones, slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Hey, you boys don't get it, do you? You, you boys aren't clued in, are you? You boys don't see it like you ought to. All the prophets, man, all the prophets. Verse 26, ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Isn't this a necessity? Isn't this the way it ought to be? Isn't this the kind of thing that should have taken place? Isn't this the kind of deal you would expect the Lord God Jehovah to pull off for redemption of a world? Oh, to enter into his glory? Isn't this the kind of step to take to bring about the redemption of an entire world? Come on, guys. You ought to have already known this. Uh, you ought to have been in on what the prophets have said. Then I want you to look at verse 27. This is really significant. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Oh, read it again. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Now, don't you think it's really significant that when Jesus Christ wanted to reveal the resurrection presence of his being, he wanted to make known to them the depth of what he was all about. When Jesus Christ took two men who didn't seem to have a clue, who were walking down an Emmaus road discussing all their hopes and yet their fail the failure to fulfill those hopes, when two men were walking down the road sad as he, as he could immediately detect, as two men were walking down their own, a seven-mile trip, all upset, discouraged, hope was gone. What was taking place? The resurrected Christ draws near and wants to bring a revelation of himself to them. And how does he bring that revelation? It's through the scriptures. He expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. He literally took 
the Moses, beginning at Moses and the prophets, and literally unfolded it and said, hey, he, here's what the word says. Here's what the book says, man. Here is dynamic truth. Here is the revelation from within. Here is what really is taking place. Come on, guys. Grasp the scriptures. Get a hold of the word of God. And he exposed the word of God. He saturated them in the word of God. Now, that's a significant pattern, isn't it? And I believe that that's going to happen in our lives as well. You see, it's if we really want to see the resurrected Christ, if we really want to know Him in tightness until His presence and our presence are so intertwined you can't tell the difference between the two. See, if we're really interested in getting into oneness, if we really want to know the dynamic of ministry happening through us, then we're going to have to get into the essence of His presence. And to get into the essence of His presence, a revelation must take place which can only come out of this book. See, we believe this book is way beyond the issue of literature. We believe that this is not an academic pursuit. We believe that what's happening in the Word of God is so far superior than just knowledge and information. We believe that what's going on here is the aliveness of the Word of God itself. And that this Word of God literally wants to penetrate, literally wants to go to the depth of, literally wants to get into our very being and bring such revelation. And it will only come because we expose ourselves to this Word. So I'm asking you to get into saturation. Saturation in terms of from Moses all the way through the prophets, letting the Christ literally reveal himself to you until his word literally becomes a revelation of his very being. See, we believe that when you read these pages, it's like Jesus is there himself. His lips are parting and he's actually speaking these words to you. That these words on these pages really has significance. And that they were not put here by accident. And that they were literally guided by the divine hand of God himself. And that what's going on here is a revelation, a revelation of God himself to our lives. And that if we, what we're really doing is not seeking information and certainly not involved in biblical trivia. What we're really into here is the exposing of the person of God through his word to us. So we're saturating in the word of God to find Jesus. We're saturating to see him as he is. We're saturating to have the enlarged picture of his being literally brought to our lives. We're, we're, we're saturating that he might take and set aside in our lives everything that would blockade his presence and his being. And we're literally hungering and thirsting after him and we're asking him to bring the revelation of himself through his word. See, I've got to convince you of this. We, we're not going to spend our class periods up, up coming. We're not going to spend them on saturation. But you are going to need to saturate if you're going to get the book of Acts. So this principle that we talk about all the time has got to become the core of your system. Has got to begin to flow through you, saturating in the Word of God. Now, as you go on, there, he ties with, and this seems to be a pattern of the scriptures consistently, and I want you to see it. Look at verse 28. Now remember verse 27. He, be, he is beginning at Moses and all the prophets. He expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And then look at verse 28. Then they drew near to the village where they were going. And he indicated that he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with him. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to him. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew, and he vanished from their sight. Phenomenal. So you got two things going on in the passage. One, there is the exposing of, from beginning at Moses all the way through the prophets, all the things that were concerning the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus literally took these things in the scriptures, literally opened up the word of God to them, and literally began to expose all of the word of God to them as he began to literally lay it out for them. How long did that take? Seven mile trip, man. Hey, moment by moment by moment, systematic after systematic after systematic, uh, step by step by step, he's walking them through the dynamic truths about himself as seen in the Old Testament scriptures. 
Now, when he got done with that, and even while he was doing that, but it's really highlighted as he got done with that, he sat down with them at this table and literally broke bread and revealed himself to them. In other words, there's a twofold thing going on here. The one who is ministering the word to them is the living word itself. So the written word is being exposed by the living word. And the living word is literally taking the written word and bringing life to it and literally making it all come together for them and to them. You see, it says in verse 31, their eyes were opened and they knew him. How did they know him? Well, he was sitting right over there. Their eyes were opened. They looked and saw that it was him. And I think that is true. There's no doubt about that. But see, it's more than that. And the scriptures indicates that. They knew him because, whoa, he had just got through walking them through. Moses and all the prophets. And in, those Mo in Moses and all the prophets, all the things that literally were speaking concerning the Christ. And with that background, with that saturation, with that involvement, the revelation of the person became real and true to them. In fact, they were so impressed with this that you'll note the rest of the story. Verse 32, And they said to one another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? See, that, that was not just passing the time. That was not just a waste of time. Well, he revealed the scriptures to them and they didn't get it. No, they, he, they did get it. There was a, an impact of truth. Their hearts burned within them. The word of God was literally open to them. They began to see what they had not seen before. And those kinds of things literally brought them to the full revelation of his resurrected presence as they saw him breaking bread before them. And they rose up, verse 33, they rose up that very hour, returned to Jerusalem, found the eleven, and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. And they told all the things that had happened on the road, and how he had, was known to them in the breaking of bread. <laughs> wow. Powerful story, isn't it? So see, I want you to get the awareness, the reality of the connection between the written word on the one hand and the living word on the other hand and the interaction that goes on between these two as they come together in your life. See, it's the, it's the living Christ who wants to literally walk with you on the Emmaus Road. He wants to walk with you, drive with you in your car, head with you down the road. Wants to literally bring the revelation of the Word. Wants to expose this book to you in saturation. The living Word wants to do that. And what will come out of that living Word will be the ability and the, and the revelation of His face so that you will see Him and know Him and He will interact with you. That's the pattern of the Scriptures. Hey, I believe with all my heart that the interaction and the reality and the exposing and the enlarging of his face and his being in our lives is all connected with this interaction in the, scrap, in, in the saturation of the scriptures as we literally begin to be exposed to the word of God, both written and living. And those two interacting together will literally bring all that we need in spiritual vitality to our life. So you can see why we're always hammering at you about the issue of saturation, man. you got to get into saturation. Saturation is the answer. Saturation is where we need to be. Now you realize, of course, that if we saturate in the Word of God, uh, there is the strong possibility of the revelation of His face. But there is a possibility that you could take all the courses, you could saturate, you, you could fill your mind with the Word, and you could treat it just like an academic approach. Information that you glean and not find the living Word. See, it's going to take the interaction of both of those. It's going to take the living Word and the written Word. Hey, the living Word without the written Word, that, that will ultimately go astray. You will find that you are misinterpreting what He's saying to you. You will find that if all you have is the living Word and the interaction of the person of Jesus in your own mind and emotions, your emotions will run wild. You'll end up thinking things you don't, that aren't right. You'll end up going in directions. Tangents will overtake you because there's no correct and you begin to live out of your emotions. The correction is found in the Word of God.
So the living word wants to use the written word to keep you online, to keep you straight, to lead you correctly. So everything must be balanced by this written word. But you see, if all you have is the written word, you'll go totally astray. You won't see it as it is. Because the author alone is the one who can explain it to you. And you'll misinterpret. And you'll go off, you'll go off half cocked. You'll miss the whole scene. You won't get the impact of truth without the living word. See, you've got to have both of these interacting. So you need the fullness of the Spirit. Oh, yes, live in the power of the Spirit. But hey, you can get off in the ditch if all you have is the power of the Spirit. You need the written word saturating, living, alive, being applied to your life by the living, wor the living word so that these two are interacting in your life to keep straight. So the living word and the written word literally interacting, bringing things together, moving you in the right direction. This is, this is the key. So as you approach the scriptures, I'm pleading with you that there would be an openness to the movement of the Spirit of God and that you would allow the Spirit of God to make the changes in you that He wants to make through His Word and that the correction, the course correction will take place in your life as, as He guides you through the living word written word interacting together and living right slap dab in the middle of that is where I want to where I want to be oh the living word and the written word interacting together and interacting in and through me until my in my life I know the wonder of the aliveness of the person of Jesus Christ as he lives through his word again I want to walk the Emmaus road I want the living Christ, resurrected living Christ, to expose the scriptures to me. I want him to sit down and reveal himself to me as he has laid the scripture pattern for me. And I want, I want to see his face as it is, as, a, a, through the lens of the Word of God. Huh. See, this is so essential in your life. Hey, if, if you don't get anything, but you get the principle of saturation, you will have gotten what you need to get out of this course and any course that's taught. For you see, it's the saturation in the Word of God and in the, and, and in the person himself that brings it about. So this interaction of the living Word and the written Word bring a total saturation for our lives. We're saturating in His presence. We're saturating in His Word. And these two come together to bring the revelation of His person to our life and to the lives of others. Oh, for the revelation of His life through us to the lives of others. Evangelism takes place. Saturation. Man, it's the key. Let's talk about saturation for a moment as we have looked at the Word of God and found basis for it in the Word of God. Let's, let's just give a few ideas that might help you in the practical aspects of the whole business of saturation. First of all, it's got to be a personal saturation. Number one, personal saturation. Um, see, what we're talking about is not a corporate saturation. What we're talking about is not a group uh, saturation. What we're talking about is not, oh, well, yeah, I'm going down to that Bible study and we're saturating together. And you allow someone else to do your saturation for you. Now, we understand that groups and we understand that Bible studies can help stimulate within us and give us guidance in our saturation. And that's fine and that's good and that's right. But see, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about personal saturation. See, if all you have is the group saturation and say, oh, yeah, every Sunday morning I go and I listen to the, the pastor and he, uh, he exposes a passage for us, then you're going to be anemic. You're going to be, be lacking. You aren't going to see the face of Jesus. And if you do see it, it will be distorted. You will not have a proper view. And for sure, you will not get a hold of the scriptures. You are going to have to have a personal, personal Personal saturation. Saturating personally in the Word of God. This is not some, something that somebody can do for you. This is not reading a Bible study book. This is not hearing what someone else says about the Word of God. This is you and Jesus in the intimate saturation together. So this is a personal thing. So what I'm asking and what I'm dreaming of for your life is that you personally would literally get into saturation. It would become a fundamental principle not to meet a class standard, not to do an assignment, but literally lifestyle until you are always saturating, personally saturating in the Word of God. 
and in his presence. So these two, again, come together to form the dynamic of what you need in your life as Jesus literally takes his word and exposes it through you to your world. Saturation. And it's got to be a personal, personal saturation. We have described saturation and what it means to personally be involved in saturation before. We've described it like a bowl of water. Yes, here's the bowl of water, a dry washcloth. We take it and we submerge it, the dry washcloth, into the water. We leave it in there and we let it soak. And after uh, some time, we come back, pick up the corners of this uh, uh, dry washcloth, pull it out, only it's dripping, dripping with the water. And we say, this washcloth is saturated. Hey, well, what happened if Jesus would pick you up by your ears, man, and submerge you into his word? Whoa, you would begin to breathe him in and breathe him out. You would begin to understand his thought process, know his mind and his heart, see him being exposed through the word. You would begin to deeply, deeply, deeply be penetrated by the dynamic of who he is, soaking in him, saturating. He would pick you up one day and hold you before his world. And you would be dripping with the livingness of the word. You would be literally soaked. Hey, you would spill it out with every word. It would be so dominating, it dominated in your mind. You'd think biblically. See, that isn't going to happen overnight. It's going to be a snap of the finger, man. See, that isn't going to come at an altar of prayer. You're not going to get that in a magic wand kind of thing. That'll not be a quick fix, see. See, if you're going to get into this, you're going to have to saturate. If you're going to know this kind of experience, until your bloodstream begins to flow with the Word of God, until your heart begins to beat with the things of the book, until your whole mind is filled with the Word of God, until you think in it, you live in it, you write in it, you see it, it it's the answer to every question that ever comes up. You're always finding the Word of God coming front and forward in your life. See, if that's going to happen, you've got to saturate, man. You've got to saturate. Oh, you've got to saturate in this book. See, it's the only chance you've got to pull that off. And it's got to be a personal, personal saturation. Hey, there's, there's no way out of it. So I'm calling you to a dedication at the beginning of this class. I'm calling you to a consecration of yourself to saturate in the book, to set up a life pattern. Now we all face the idea of busy lives. See, I, you say, I, I don't have time just to sit down and take five hours a day in my study and just saturate in the Word of God. I've got other things to do, I've got other assignments, I've got classes, I've got this, I've got that, i got a job, i got a family, i got, I got, I got, hey, all kinds of things distract me from this personal saturation. Hey, that is all an excuse. That is an excuse. See, what we're going to have to learn to do is saturate on the run. Saturation is a lifestyle. Saturation, living in His presence, living in His Word, has to become an unfolding lifestyle. And hey, we all got things to do. We're all busy. And trust me on this, it never gets easier. See, I thought when I was in high school, when I got into this saturation idea, well, high school's so busy, you got athletics, you got this, you got that, you got the other, hey, you got the church, you got all this stuff going on. So, when I get in college, then I can really get into biblical studies and I can really saturate. Got into college, didn't get any better. I found out I had all these assignments, book to read, this to get done, that to get done, extracurricular activities, then I ended up pastoring a church besides. Whoa, man. Hey, I don't have time to saturate. Well, I know what happened. When I get in seminary, then it'll all smooth out. Then I can really begin to concentrate and saturate in the Word of God. Lo and behold, got into seminary, didn't get any better, man. Hey, more assignments, more things, deeper, deeper level of studies, more books to read. Hey, more papers to write, more and Oh, I know, when I get out of school, that, hey, then I'll get into the pastor. Then I can spend a half a day every day saturating in the Word of God. Yeah, things will smooth out. Hey, first day in the pastor, phone's ringing. Whoa, hey, there's there's no time. Hey, you got hospital calls, got this to do, that to do, got to fix that. Hey, your wife wants you to do, hey, and all complicated. Hey, it never gets any easier. See, there's no way to clear the slate and say, hey, I'm just going to spend my time sitting, reading the Word of God. So we're going to have to saturate on the run. We're going to have to live in saturation. 
Now, of course, there will be concentrated times when you literally get into the book. You outline, you diagram, you study, you go at it. It's got to be that. We understand that. But you've also got to learn to saturate on the run. Hey, what happens if you carry, if, if you write a paragraph down on a card and you carry it with you and all day long you're just pulling it out, going over it, praying about it, thinking about it. Hey, it's up here in your mind. It's in your heart. You're functioning with it. You're living in it. You're moving with it. Hey, you're saturating in it. That's what, hey, that's what, the, what, we're, what, what we're talking about. See, it's not just sitting down for an hour and then forgetting it for the day. Even sitting down for three hours and forgetting it for the day. It's, it's saturation, yes, in concentration but then it's as you're going down the road, as you're driving, as you're living, as you're working, as you're hoeing the garden, as you're shoveling the snow, as you're, as you're, as you're, hey, as you're moving, those, then you're saturating and life begins. He, it's amazing how the dynamic of the Word of God can come alive to you when you're going to find the moment He speaks to you and that whole scripture, the key to it, begins to unfold and you begin to know what He's talking about because... You've been saturating. I've been jogging down the street, man, and wham, it would all come together. I've been in the middle of the night in my bed, and whoa, it just came together. Hey, I wasn't with the Bible open, I wasn't, but I'd been saturating, and I'd been saturating continually in the passage, and it just all came together as God literally brought all of the thoughts in, uh, into play and literally brought revelation. So you see, saturation is not just sitting down uh, reading the scriptures. Saturation is, hey, day after day, hour after hour, living in it, moving in it, flowing with it. That's personal saturation. See, nobody can do that for you. Hey, you, hey, this has to be an interaction between you and the Almighty God. See, you can't do that corporately. You can't do that as a group. You can't do that as a church member. Hey, you, uh, with the other church members, you have got to personally, personally saturate. So we're talking about personal saturation. And I want you to commit yourself to that in the book of Acts. I want you to go after this personally. I want you to literally, hey, this is not to get an assignment done. This is that God might do in these class periods what he wants to do. Otherwise, you're going to sit through these lectures. You're going to sit through these discussions. You're going you're to get a few things. But man, you're not going to, hey, it's going to be because you saturate that the book of Acts is going to come alive. And there's going to become, and there's going to come revelation out of what we're doing in the class period. So you see your personal saturation in this is really, really important. Personal saturation. You got to have it. But I also want to talk to you not only about personal saturation, that was number one, but number two, consistent saturation. I want to call you to consistent saturation. What do we mean by that? Well, we've already indicated it and gone over it, but let's go over it again. See, it's the idea that this cannot be a hit and miss kind of thing. This has to be a consistent, moment by moment, daily kind of deal. This has to be a permeating, consistent kind of thought process. This has to be the deep intent of your heart, your mind, and your life. See, anytime, any place, anywhere, I should be able to come up to you, tap you on the shoulder and say, well, what are you working on? And you should have something generating, something going on, some, some word of God that you're saturating in, some, some, some uh, aliveness of his presence that's taking his word and literally revealing it to you. And no, you aren't done. No, it isn't finished. No, you haven't got a full-fledged developed study on it. But hey, God, it's germinating. God is working on you and you're working on it and this is consistent. See, that should be happening all the time. Again, as you go to bed at night, thinking about it till you go to sleep, waking up still thinking about it. As you're jogging down the street, man, as you're driving to the hospital, as you're going down to the grocery store, as you're cooking the meal for this family, as you're washing the dishes, hey, this, ger this begins to germinate within you, hey, and generates the overwhelming awareness of His presence that brings the revelation of His Word to your life. See, that's consistent. And there will be no full-blown revelation of his face. There'll no, be no resurrected Lord standing before you, breaking bread, revealing himself to you, unless there's the consistent, consistent, consistent revelation 
of his person. So I'm calling you to the consistent saturation of his very being. I'm calling you to consistently get into the word of God. This has got to be a lifestyle. Now, you have not lived in that lifestyle. I understand that. Hey, you've got to develop a new pattern. See, what's happened to us is we live in the pattern of the self-style. All of our lives we've lived in the self-style. Thought about ourselves, thought about made plans for ourselves, lived out of ourselves, did for ourselves, our thought process revolved around ourselves, we we're all wrapped up in ourselves. The whole, our whole life deal was all about in the self-pattern. We, th we, we thought about self Thoughts, we, we lived in self-plans, we, we, we thought about self-problems, we searched for self-solutions. See, it was all about self. It was the pattern of our lives. Now the Holy Spirit wants to break up those old patterns. Now the Holy Spirit wants to go to the depth of your heart and your life. Now the Holy Spirit wants to literally intertwine Himself within you and develop a whole new pattern of living in His presence through the Word. So that your thought patterns are about Him. It's about the Word. It, it's the application of where, what He wants. It's the movement of His Spirit. It's the aliveness of His presence. It's the wonder of His very being. And you're living in the flow of the actual presence of the living, written Word. Now, that won't just happen. You're going to have to break up the old patterns, man. The break up the old patterns and develop a brand new habit. And that's what I'm encouraging you to do. Bite into this, man. This saturation, personal saturation on a consistent basis. Personal saturation, consistent saturation. Until this becomes the lifestyle. This becomes the day in and day out consistent. This is who and what you are. You live in the Word of God. He's feeding you constantly. You're always... You're you're always saturating in the Word of God. It's developing in and through you. You breathe it in, you breathe it out. Hey, and again, that won't just naturally happen. You won't just make up your mind and that'll take place. No, God is going to have to help you. You're going to have to break up the old patterns and set a whole new pattern so that the divine God literally becomes the focus of your being through His Word. So we're talking about consistent saturation. This has to be a lifestyle. Now there's one other kind of saturation or aspect to saturation that I want to talk to you about. There's personal saturation, there's consistent saturation, and there's revealed saturation. Now the interesting thing about saturation is it dies on, at your hand. It turns to rot unless it's revealed. In other words, unless it spills through you and is communicated to others. See, the reason God gives you great truth is He wants to move through you and share that truth with a world. That's why He's revealing Himself to you. So there's the saturation, oh yeah, and you glean from it personally, yes. But it's got to be revealed. Absolutely convinced of this. I believe that the revelation of, from, that comes from saturation is like manna. Hey, you can't store it up. If you try to store it up, it rots on you. Hey, if you don't eat it and use it, you get new every single day and it, it'll turn to rot on you, man. Unless it's revealed, unless you spill it out, unless you use it. God does not reveal truth to you just for the fun of it. God is going to bring overwhelming revelation from His Word through His person, but He's going to do it so that you can touch the lives of others. Can't tell you how many times, man, how many times in my life I've, I've had revelation come from the Word of God. Saturation was going on. Revelation came to place. Hey, saw the face of Jesus. Saw the passage open. Hey, very next scene in my life, I'm talking to so-and-so and he's revealing this overwhelming problem and guess what? That's exactly what God just revealed to me in the Scriptures. And I lay the book open, man, and say, look right here. And the answer to the man's problem, God had been giving me through the saturation process. See, that is the experience that must take place in your life.
So we're talking about saturation, personal, oh yes, got to have it, man. Living word, written word, interacting, and you living slap dab. Hey, nobody can do this for you. Can't be a corporate thing. You've got to saturate personally, inwardly. This is your mind and your heart. Nobody can do it for you. Consistent saturation. Hey, you've got to consistently get into this. I'm talking lifestyle pattern. I'm not talking about it for a few hours a day. I'm talking about every minute of your life. I'm talking about why you sleep while you drive, wherever you go, whatever you're doing, the Word of God coming alive to you. And I'm talking about revealing it. I'm talking about it flowing out of you. Saturation. We're going to get into the book of Acts and saturate. Oh, be challenged with His presence. 